welcome to classes on physical chemistry today's class is on electrochemistry higher secondary second year the topic is electrochemistry it is a bit hard and non uninteresting so you try to follow the class minutely so that you will find a bit interest and i hope you can understand the each and every terms first of all to analyze the topic let us first understand the electrochemistry what does it mean if you can understand the meaning of electrochemistry you can understand what is the topic going to deal with so first of all electro means electricity chemistry means from chemistry means from chemical changes there is a current there is electricity so it is a branch of chemistry which deals with the production of electricity with chemical change and also chemical change occurs or chemical change brought about with the change or with the passage of electricity so let us first of define and split the main theme of the subject electrochemistry in short i am going to the topic and let me split the topic and what are the two things here we are going to discuss is would be crystal clear from the discussion of the definition so you see it is the branch of chemistry which deals with the productions of electricity with chemical change electricity with chemical change and also chemical change brought about with passage of current two things first of all the electricity will produce with the change in chemical changes where there is change in chemical change or substances undergo change chemically electricity is produced and second the chemical change is brought about with electricity two things one is reverse with other so electricity with chemical change electricity with chemical change is electromotive chemistry and chemical change brought about with electricity is electrolysis electricity with chemical change is called electromotive chemistry and chemical change which is brought about with the passage of electricity is called electrolysis so broadly we are dealing with two thing one is electromotive chemistry means with the change of chemical substances chemical substances electricity is produced is dealt with electromotive chemistry and when electricity make a change of chemical re reaction or chemical structure that is electrolysis so your structure or the topic has been splitted into two part one part is electromotive chemistry other is electrolysis one is due to the splitting of the chemical substances like electrolytes you will get electricity and other is when you pass current in the chemical electrolytes electrolytic solution then some changes occurs that is dealt with by electrolysis so first one is electromotive chemistry means chemical change causes electricity we will go on with this one first and then second part will deal with the change of chemical substances is brought about with passing of current is later part in this part we will deal with conductivity or conductance or specific conductance or variation of conductivity like this and in this topic we will deal with the change of chemical substance is brought about with the passage of current means cell um voltaic cell daniel cell um fuel cell a lot of these electrolysis Faraday's law so two parts first of all 
will start with electromotive chemistry means the electricity with the chemical change am i right electricity with chemical change I'm defining these two, these things is correlated with these subjects, but these things are not to be learned by heart and it is not important for exam point of view, but the knowledge is very important, profound knowledge is required hard to understand the main basis principle of the electrochemistry. So there is conductors, everybody of you knew the substance or the material which allows the passage of current to flow through it is called conduction, conductor. Very simple definition. I need to explain. You have got it in first year also in for the physics. The concept is the same. Yeah, the substance which allows the passage of current to pass through it is called conductors. Am I right? So now, if this substance which allows the passage of current to flow through it is called conductor. Now, what is conductivity? What is conductivity? The things are very closely related. You may not, if you don't think, you may not understand the facts. So, what is in general conductors? You have already defined the conductor, the substance which allows the passage of current to pass through it is to flow through equal conductors. Now, what is the conductivity? Conductivity. It is the property by virtue of which a substance allows the passage of current to flow through it is called conductivity. It is very important thing. It is the property by virtue of which it allows the passage of current is called conductivity. Means conductivity is the property of the substance which allows the passage of current. Means through the passage of currents, there are some resistances, there are some problems, there are some hurdles. It may not allow it, give some obstruction in its passages. So out of this abstraction if the current passes then it is called conductors and the property by virtue of which allows the passage of current is called conductivity means there are some substances which gives abstraction to the flow of current and if this abstraction is overcome then current flows then it is called conductivity that property of allowing the current to pass through it is called conductivity the property if it allows the passage of current through it is called conductivity the first enemy of conductivity is its resistance is as its resistance if the resistance is small conductivity is more if resistance is big conductivity is less so the property by virtue of a substance allows the passage of current to flow through is called conductivity means if the resistance of a substance is less the current is more if the resistance or the obstruction to pass through or uh, um, for a current to pass through it is more than current is less Am I right? So, I have got one enemy, this resistance. Mind that resistance is the determining factor for the property of a substance to allow the passage of current to flow through it. So, let us now split further to make the topic more interesting and more easy to understand. Means, conductors. We have already defined. Now, conductors are of two types. One type is metallic conductor, other type is electrolytic conductors. So, what is metallic conductors? Metallic conductors where the current flows means electron flows through it and gives, allows current to pass through it means electron will flow through the conductor through the metal. If the current passes through the metal, that is electron passes through the metal, then it is called metallic conductor. Now, what is electrolytic conductors? will be concerned with this part electrolytic conductors means when in electrolytes electrolytes i'll going to explain what are electrolytes electrolytes if you we make a solution of the electrolyte then this electrolyte will gives a split or dissociate into ions and this ion allows the passage of current this is called electrolytic conductors so in metallic conductor that's the medium or the substance must be a metal but in case of electrolytic conductor, it will be solution of electrolytes and this electrolytes breaks up into ion and ion will allow means 
Here, the current is due to ion in case of electrolytic conductors, but in case of metallic conductor, current is due to electron, mobbing of electron. Here, current is due to mobbing of electron. Here, current is due to ions. Am I right? So, Again, in short, I am just making the, the concept crystal clear to see what uh, in metallic conductors current is due to electron and ionic electrolytic conductor current is due to the ions. Number two, no change in matter takes place in metallic conductor change of matters or transfer of matters change you better you write transfer of matter. No transfer of transfer of matter not transfer of matter takes place in metallic conductor but transfer of matter takes place ions get deposited in electrode in electrode in electrolysis method you will find and explain later on their workers and the resistance increases with increase in temperature in metallic conductors but here resistance decreases with increase in temperature here no chemical change in property property when change in property of the metal iron or um, um, copper uh, the conductors there is no change of chemical properties workers are here but electrolytic conductor change the chemical property worker because a molecule changes into ions and time uh, hence there is change in the chemical property because a molecule itself is a molecule and when ion comes the molecule and ions there is a chemical change of these two this, this, okay, this is the basic differences between electro electrolytic conductors and So the main part we are coming to the topic is again conductance. Conductance is designated by C in some book. It is G in your book. It is G. So conductance. What is conductance? It is nothing but ease with which a current flows through a conductor. It is called conductance. It is a comfort. It is the uh, it is the way with ease with which a current flows through the conductor. What is ease? Ease means if there is any difficulty in 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 passing electricity through it, then current will not move so easily so the substance who, which offer less resistance there will be more current to flow through it and vice versa if the resistance of the substance is more the conductance is less that is with the ease with which a current move in a conductor is called conductance so if the resistance is less the main factor is resistance the, it will allow the more current to pass through it and vice versa means conductance is nothing but related to a resistance that is conductance conductance c or g is nothing but reverse of resistance if resistance is less conductance is more if resistance is more conductance is less that is conductance is equal to 1 by resistance what is unit if it is ohm 1 by ohm ohm inverse so its unit is ohm inverse or it is mho or it is like this so this is conductance it is reverse of the resistance less resistance more is the conductance So, as we have come across, as we have come across, across 
with resistance now again we are coming to a new term specific resistance or resistivity rock let us explain what is specific resistivity sorry specific resistance or resistivity actually specific resistance by new convention of chemistry it is resistivity and in some book it is written as specific resistance so specific resistance resistivity are the same term but very often resistivity term is used as per the modern concepts uh, convention so before understanding the specific resistance or raw let us explain what is r and it is known to you r is proportional to the length of the conductor through which current is made to pass am i right and r is also proportional to the area of cross section of the conductor in which it is made to pass if this is conductor am i right so if you take this and that area is pi r square is area of conductors area of the cross section so r is proportional to length more the length of the conductor more is the resistance and r is inversely proportional to on the cross section if the cross section is both big and big and big less is the resistance so r is related to two things r is related to length and r is related to this if you combine these two by combined variation then we will get r is proportional to l by a now what we do r is equal to some constant l into a and that constant raw is called specific resistance or resistivity so r is equal to r raw l by a therefore raw is equal to r a by l so the specific resistive resistance or resistivity raw equal to r a by l you yourself can raw take the uh, unit uh, r is the resistance ohm if it is meter square then you give it meter so you do yourself you can find the unit am i right i am not going to this one so specific resistance resistivity is nothing but rho is equal to r a by l so mathematically i have shown you what is specific resistivity but what is its definition to give the definition let us start from the equation rho is equal to r a l what we get here rho is equal to r a l if if a is equal to 1 meter square and l is equal to 1 meter or better you can write in terms of centimeter um uh so let us define what is specific resistivity from the mathematical formula so um, uh, what is uh, specific resistance specific rho is equal to r a by l am i right so if you assume a is equal to 1 cm square l is equal to 1 cm then rho is equal to r rho is equal to r so rho is equal to r when it happens to take uh, we get this relation when a is equal to 1 cm l is equal to 1 cm so it is the area of resistance of the conductors um, uh, 1 cm and length of the conductor equal to l that is it is the it is defined as the resistance which is meta measured in ohm for a conductor which area of cross section is 1 cm and length is 1 cm it is defined as the resistance measured in ohm whose area of cross section is 1 cm and length is 1 cm that is called specific resistance or resistivity am i right from definition mathematical point you define yourself again we, we are now trying to explain another term conductivity simply conductivity or specific conductance which is designated as kappa which is designated as kappa 
what is kappa it is nothing but the reciprocal of resistivity reciprocal of resistivity of a conductor is called conductivity or specific conductance or kappa that is kappa is equal to 1 by rho what earlier we have did we did r rho is equal to r a by l am i right keep it in your mind resistivity is equal to r a by l so what is kappa kappa equal to 1 by rho means it is reciprocal of rho r a by l means it is l by r a or we can write uh, 1 by r into 1 by a 1 by r equal to conductance earlier we have already shown and l by a is equal to cell constant or conductance you can write it g or c for your can book it is g and cell constant it is g dash you can write kappa is equal to g into g dash now see the beauty of the definition the reciprocal of resistivity is called conductivity or specific conductance is kappa kappa equal to 1 by rho is equal to l by r so what is l by r if you arrange it 1 by r equal to l by a so reciprocal of resistance is conductance earlier very fast i have defined it l by a is a constant term is cell constant i will define a bit later and that is kappa is equal to conductance g and cell constant is g g g dash g dash equal to l by a where g dash equal to l by a so definition from definition uh, mathematical relations uh, you, you find out the si unit 1 by ohm length is meter or meter square 1 by ohm centimeter centimeter you yourself can find out no need to pass time simply by giving you the si unit if you know the formula from the formula you can very easily find the si or cgs unit of the powers conductivity or specific conductance Now, already you have come across with the term cell constant, why it is needed and why it, why it is uh, to be calculated before we doing any practical uh, experimentation uh, for conductivity, measurement of conductivity in our laboratory, what we do, we take a salt solution of strong electrolyte or weak electrolytes and uh, we uh, introduce uh, uh, electrodes and uh, we got whether there is any current or there is conductivity we can measure this one so now for this there is a solution in electrodes and the length between these two electrodes is equal to l if you assume l and the area of cross section of this electrode is equal to a then length divided by cross section of these two is uh, g star so l by a is a cell constant it is should be measured before taking out uh, doing out uh, doing the experiment of conduct conducting conductance so why it is needed it is not easy to calculate the area of cross sections and that's why because that area sometimes will be uh, in terms of volume i will come across later on conductivity uh, you will find it later on because here you are getting cell constant l by a sometimes that a it is uh, difficult to find out this so what's happened you are taking some solution so whenever you are taking some solution on dilution or make it concentration the volume of the solution will come into play what does this volume of the solution come into play means you are getting length 
you are getting length and you are getting area length into area equal to volume and with volume that volume if length is taken if, if length is get taken is centimeter square and this length is centimeter then volume equal to centimeter cube so if it is 1 centimeter if it is 1 centimeter square equal to 1 centimeter cube so conductivity is generally when we concerned with 1 centimeter cube means its uh, area of cross section is 1 centimeter and length is centi length is 1 centimeter means the volume is 1 centimeter cube so conductance of 1 centimeter cube volume means where the area of cross section is 1 centimeter square and length is 1 centimeter is measured it can pass into the volume so we will concern with the volume generally the cell constant is not easy to find out it is generally find out in a standard condition of kcl uh, uh, with n by 50 normality when it is uh, made a um, solution of kcl n by 50 uh, and normal solutions and we measured the cell constant and this cost cell constant used in calculation of mathematical calculation so cell constants is a typically hard thing and it is nothing but a ratio of the length between the electrodes and to the area of cross section of electrodes and this area and length give you the centimeter cube means volume that is one centimeter cube volume also gives earlier we have defined what is specific resistance T is defined as defined which is measured Very simple definition. I am here. Um, uh, I have here. The, I am going to here uh, explain another uh, term. What is equivalent conductance? So before that, you should know what is equivalent mass and molar mass. I think you have got in first year. I needed to explain this one. Otherwise, you can't understand. You find it a bit difficult to understand. Means it is defined as the conductance of the ion steadies by ionization of one normal, one normal, one normal, one normal solution one molar solution one normal solution if you have got molarity and normality are not the same sometimes it is same sometimes you will get there is difference it depends upon some basicity or acidity you have got in acid base uh, chapters so it is defined as the conductance of the ions produced by ionizations of one normal solution if you make one normal solution if it is put in between these two electrolytes then this con uh, the conductance is given by one normal solution of the electrolyte will be given by equivalent conductor and it is designated as lambda equivalent so what is molar yes So, mathematically, we will write lambda equivalent equal to kappa into 1000 divided by n. n means normality. Now, it is semen centimeter square kappa and it is gram equivalent. Normality is nothing but gram equivalent. Is below. So, gram equivalent will above minus 1. The assign it is S cm square gram equivalent inverse 1. So, Again, very simple in a case of equivalent conductance, we will told it is the conductivity of given by ions produced by ionization of one equivalent, uh, one normal solution of electrolytes, of electrolytes, earlier it was equivalent conductors, conductance, 
Now it is molar conductance. One mole of substance, one mole of electrolyte when dissolves in the solution, and it will get, it will get, it will give, give you the, it will furnish ions, and due to these ions, there will be the electricity conductivity, and this conductivity is due to the dissolutions or dissociations of one molar solution. So here molar it means one mole is here below not normal. One molar solution means small per in mass will come about n kappa is equal to cement percent ten centimeter square and thousand equal to one thousand ml. Am I right? So molar conductivity is equal to uh, kappa into one thousand divided by m and its si its units is CGS unit is centimeter square per mole and si unit is equal to n meter square per cent. So a very simple thing, it is nothing to, nothing much complicated to understand. So molar conductive univalent, univalent KCL, NSCL, um, AGCL, AG, NO3, etc. These are univalent means plus one, plus minus, plus one, my, minus one, plus one, minus one. So these are univalent. For univalent electrolytes, uh, univalent electrolytes, we see molar conductivity and equivalent conductivity at infinite dilution is equal. But if if it is not univalent, then molar conductivity is say if it is still um, aluminum sulfate so there is aluminum and sulfate so you will get in this way so when it's breaks you will get two aluminum three positive and three sulfate two negative so ion is ion is not univalent am i right so if the if the electrolyte is of that type where it is not univalent then you assume two cation number of cation two and number of anion three number of cation two number of anion three and this total anion will give you the z and equivalent molecular um, molar conductance is equal to the equivalent conductance into number of ions is equal to z this is the relation for not univalent other electrolytes So you see limiting molar conductivity, it is a very important term a bit later we will come, we will come across with this one, you must know it, limiting molar conductivity. Limiting molar conductivity is the conductivity of ions in electrolytic solutions where the dilution is at infinity. If you dilute, go on dilute and dilute and dilute, if the dilution is at infinity, the conductivity furnished by these ions will be the limiting molar conductivity is conductivity at infinity, conductivity at infinite dilution. So the conducti conductivity of ions of the electrolytes in the solution at infinite dilute, infinite dilution is called limiting molar conductivity. Simple conductivity and on dilution there is a bit difference will uh, come across with the variation of the conductivity of strong and weak electrolyte and at infinite dilutions there is a change in both the conductivity will come across with the terms of the limiting molar conductivity a bit later. Very simple, 
nothing tough, nothing tough here in the definition. Degree of dissociation. What is dissociation means? Dissociation is breaking up the molecule to furnish ions. So, you know, electrophiles are of, sorry, electrolytes are two types. One are, one are strong electrolyte, others are weak electrolyte. Strong electrolytes are those electrolytes which dissociated almost 100% into ions are called strong electrolyte. Say NaCl, KCl. When it dissolves it in normal solution, it will furnish all sodium plus and chlorine negative almost 100%. These are called strong electrolytes. And weak electrolyte like CH3, CWOH are weak electrolytes, NH4OH are weak electrolytes. These are the weak electrolytes which dissociate into ions, but till there are some molecules which doesn't dissociate it. They remain as molecules in the solution. So there is no 100% or almost all dissociates, all the molecules doesn't dissociate, molecules do not dissociate into ions. These electrolytes are called weak electrolytes. So there is a concept of the degree of dissociation means alpha. Alpha is equal to uh, lambda V by V naught. Means it is the ratio of conductivity, um, um, uh, molar conductance at certain volume to molar conductance at infinite dilution. Means at infinite dilution, there is nothing left out. Each and every molecule has furnished into dissociated into ions, means it is fixed. At infinite dilution, it is fixed ions. Out of these fixed ions, at certain volume before dilution, at certain volume, you take the dissociation of that ion here. So, dissociation of ions at certain volume to dissociation of ion at infinite dilution, that ratio is called alpha. That alpha will become equal to 1 in case of strong electrolyte if the electrolyte is strong so its dissociation is 100 percent either in the uh, infinite dilution or in the dilution at certain volume all the cases it will furnish all type of molecule into ions dissociating to all types of molecules into ions so in this case you will get lambda alpha is equal to 1. Here we will explain variation of conductivity of strong electrolytes uh, with the help of debye hackel onsagar equations where lambda m equal to molar conductivity, it is equal to molar conductivity at infinity minus a plus b root over c and this is concentration a and b are the constants and lambda m equal to molar conductivity at certain dilution and lambda m equal to molar conductivity at infinite dilution. Or simply, you can write the equation as lambda c at the at certain content concentration molar conductivity is equal to concentration at infinite dilution is equal to b into root over c, where b is an empirical constant. You can also write this equation. From this equation, you can you can find if you plot the graph conductivity versus molar conductance of a strong electrolyte, you will find. Say for NaCl, for KCl, a bit difference is there, but graph is like it is linear. Minutely follow one thing. So, if you talk about the concentration here, it is highest concentration that corresponding to that concentration, your conductivity is this. 
corresponding to that conduct tends your conductivity is this corresponding to that your conductivity is the, this so you see when the concentration it is increased concentration so if you want gone dilute dilution if you dilute and dilute make the concentration it is zero concentration am i right so make the concentration diluted if you make it dilute if you gone dilution gone diluting the solution so when you, it is the highest concentration say when you add up some water make it dilute so the concentration is decreased or that is dilution is done so on increased dilution your conductivity is this again on further dilution conductivity is increased there on further con dilution conductivity is this on further dilution conductivity increases that is on dilution the conductivity of strong electrolyte say nacl or kcl will increase on dilution conductivity or uh, conductivity goes and increases now question it is a linear increase linear increase of conductivity of strong electrolyte strong electrolyte on decrease of concentration or increase of dilution how it is possible say if you talk about the strong electrolyte now if you talk about a strong electrolyte and if you make a solution as per definition strong electrolyte furnish or dissociate almost 100 percent to na plus and nsl and we know conductivity increase or decrease of conductivity depends on two factor one factor if the number of ions is more if the number of ions are more then conductivity is more or if the interionic interaction is less then conductivity is more what does interionic interaction i will explain in it so the conductivity would have increased if the number of ions is increased am i right and on the other hand the conductivity will increase if the interionic after dissociation it will become this so there is still interionic attraction exist in between these two if interionic attraction is less then ion will move freely then the conductivity will increase means in the case of strong electrolyte the substance nacl will almost dissociate it into nacl plus and cl minus so there is no chance of greater and greater number of na plus and cl negative on dilution because it is already 100 percent dissociated now why there will be increase of conductivity this is a point a striking point may come to your mind but mind that when there is limited volume of um, electrolytic solution of sodium chloride there are sodium chloride and cl negative they are close by close to each other till there is this some amount of interionic interaction or attraction between two plus and minus ion thereby the free movement of the ion which are responsible for conductivity will be less then the conductivity will be less but when will make go on increasing the volume of the solution of strong electrolyte though number of ion nacl plus cl minus will not increase because it has already almost 100 percent dissociated but on dilution due to dielectric constant dielectric constant of water the sodium plus and chloride negative chloride negative ions will be far far and apart from each other thereby inter ionic interaction will become lesser and lesser and lesser then sodium or ions will be very easily moved from one place to another due to free movement on dilutions of strong electrolyte the conductivity increases whenever you are going to diluting diluting and diluting the interionic interaction between the plus and chloride ions will become lesser and lesser and lesser and they are very freely mob mobable from one part to another thereby conductivity increases this is the reason as to why it is explained by the um, the formula 
divide Hackel on Sagar equations and the equation was in this way or in this way if you plot this here you will get these things and explanation I have explained it in a very simple way you can explain but one of the very important point here is a term very important term here you need to know you need to know this term is say 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 for strong electrolyte you have drawn in this way if you want to find out this is zero if you now want to find out the conductivity of a uh, molar conductivity or equivalent conductivity of the strong electrolyte at infinite dilution what will you do from the graph you can find out from experimentally you have got these points am i right from graph you have got this point now you do one thing infinite dilution means you must pass to this point at zero dilution that is the infinite dilution and the corresponding value of lambda m at this point is called infinite dilution alpha or zero that corresponding value of lambda m is the limiting conductivity or the conductivity at infinite dilution we have done it by making dot 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 extending and cutting the y-axis and the corresponding value from zero y-axis up to this is called the value of conductance at infinite dilution dilution infinite dilution and this process of dot 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 and uh, uh, intersecting the y-axis this up to this is called extra pollution so with the help of extrapolation, we can very easily find the, the lambda m value, lambda m naught value means um, conductance at infinity. So, from Ansagar equation, um, divide Hackel Ansagar equation, if you draw the graph from extrapolation of the graph, we can very easily find lambda m naught. Now, let's see what's happened with the variation of conductivity in case of weak electrolyte, weak electrolyte, weak electrolyte say ch3 c double o h how its molar or equivalent conductivity varies now here is a point very often asked in the exam that if you draw the graph of weak electrolyte and but but the molar conductivity equivalent, conduct, equivalent conductivity of weak electrolyte say ch3 c double h graph will be this earlier case the there was steady increase in strong electrolyte there was steady increase of molar conductivity or equivalent conductivity strong electrolyte with dilution that steady increase was explained by the graph of that type so it was linear but here it is a steep steep increase the increase is steep that is steeply increased now for strong it is steady and for weak electrolyte it is steeply increased conductivity is steeply increased suddenly increased what does it mean what does it mean so you see when conductivity it is the highest concentration is this the conductivity corresponding to this is this then if you make dilution the conductivity is molar conductivity is this if dilution further dilution is this on further dilution is this on further dilution is this but on this above this we can't explain i am telling later on so you see in case of uh, acidic acid or weak electrolytes what's happened the conductivity is conductivity increases on dilution it is not steady it fluctuates suddenly goes high only because of the fact that uh, acetic acid when dissolves in water it gives into ch3 c double o negative and h plus ion but more of the ch3 c double o h molecule will remain as molecule it doesn't strong electrolyte but whenever you will go on increasing dilution and dilution dilution earlier i told you conductivity depends upon two factor one factor is if the number of the ions increase in the solution then conductivity will increase and number two if the uh, interionic interaction is decreased by any means then ion interaction increased 
but in case of strong electrolyte it is already 100% dissociation so on dilution there is no chances of increase of ions it is already dissociated but there is uh, um, uh, less amount of inter interionic interaction in on dilution hence the ions gives the more conductor conductivity the party but in case of weak electrolytes what happen uh, at the first step if there are some amount of CSTC development molecules and S ions and H plus ions but on dilution further unsuccessful uh, dissociated CSTC double will start dissociating into CST or negative and H positive on dilution more and more CH3 C on C double or negative and H positive ion will increase in the solution so more of the ion more will be the uh, conductivity so on dilution for weak electrolyte undissociated molecules start dissociating giving rise to more and more ions so there is steep increase in the ionic concentration so the graph is like this this is the explanation but one point here again is that in earlier cases we found it we found the molar conductivity of strong electrolyte at infinite dilution or this and this was done due to the extrapolation extrapolation and on x y axis whatever amount the value given by this was uh, was termed as molar conductivity at infinite dilution but here you see if you gone increasing this one it will go in this way and if you extend the uh, uh, graph the graph will be like this so there is no chances of intersecting one this uh, one to get you the lambda naught lambda naught for weak electrolyte by extrapolation hence for uh, the graph it is not possible to find out the molar conductivity of weak electrolyte by extrapolation process now what to do we will now try to find out how we will cal 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 calculate the uh, uh, limiting value molar conductance of weak electrolyte uh, without doing any extrapolation which is not possible at all from the figure we will come across with this one now weak electrolyte Let me explain the term. I minutely follow it is a bit a bit typical and hard. You can't understand you. Please don't learn by heart without understanding the fact. Here, Colras law of independent migration of ions. There are some terms you first mind mind the mind the fact. Independent migration of ions. First term is independent, second term is migration, and next term is ions. So what does ions means let us first define at infinite dilution each ion moves independently if the electrolytic solution is made in dilution at infinite dilute it is diluted at infinite dilution now what happens each ions are far apart from each other that is each ion will start moving independently of its co-ion what is co-ion means NaCl and NaKCl say so it is plus it is minus it is plus it is minus so the co-ion of sodium is chlorine and potassium is chloride so when they are far far apart on infinite dilution so they start moving independently with respect of its irrespect of its co-ion and it starts moving with respect of its co-ion this it starts moving with respect to its co-ion Cl negative so it is 10 at infinite dilution each ion moves independently of its co-ion means there is no interaction between them 
नंबर वन एन कंट्रीब्यूट्स टू द टोटल मोलिकुलर मोलार कंडक्टिविटी एन कंट्रीब्यूट्स एंड दीज आयस आर रेस्पन्सिबल टू गिव यू द फाइनल मोलार कंडक्टिविटी ऑफ द सबस्टेंस दैट इज दैट आयन एट इनफाइनिट डायल्यूशन उल कम्बाइनली कंट्रीब्यूट टू द टोटल मोलार कंडक्टिविटी ऑफ दिस सबस्टेंस that is they had a specific tendency to give the molar conductivity and they contribute towards the total molar conductivity at infinite dilution and on the other hand they are independent with uh, the with the nature of the the ion attached they are independent so co ion and contributes to the total molar conductivity of electrolyte irrespective of nature of other ions with which it is Associated before conducting measuring the conductivity, say I have taken one example. It is independent, so it is not affected by the co-ions with which it is associated earlier. So molar conductivity is independent of the nature of the co-ion which was associated earlier at infinite dilution because at infinite dilution each ions are free to move. without any interference with their co-ions and they doesn't affect in the molar conductivity of their respective co-ions which wa was uh, which it is associated with which it is associated means you see if the molar conductivity of kcl at infinite dilution and molar conductivity nsl infinite dilution If you subtract these two, you will get two to three point four into ten to the minus four. And again, you see molar conductivity of Ki minus molar conductivity of Ni at infinite dilution again is the same. Is the same. Now you see, you try to follow these things. It is here. Here Cl and Cl are same, but plus potassium and sodium are different. But here in this case, here in this case. chloride and iodide these two are same and positive part are different here positive part are different am i so in the both the cases we see we see number of the co ions are different here in the first case it is chlorine and chlorine and the second case it is iodine and iodine but when we take the difference of these two sets of the ions where there are some common ions in is when we get the differences we get the difference is the same so from this khaldas assume that at infinite dilution the cation part will starts moving independent of their co ions chloride and ion, negative ions and these two positive ions Will surely contribute to get this value of the molar conductivity at infinite dilution, but they are are uninterfered. There is no interference of their co-ions like chloride or iodide. These are the different nature of the co-ions because if there was any interference at infinite dilution of difference in the co-ions, the value would have been different. That's why. it is told at infinite dilution it ions move independent of its co-ions and contributes specifically to the total molar conductivity of the electrolyte irrespective of the nature of chlorine iodine chlorine iodine irrespective of the nature of their co-ions in which it is associated earlier this is called khaldas law of independent migration now in my last part i am coming uh, the application of khaldas law application of
So, why I am coming to application of Holder's law? You please try to understand the fact why. Because earlier, a bit earlier, I have shown you that it is not possible from the graph of uh, uh, weak electrolyte to get the conductivity of weak electrolyte at infinite dilution because no extrapolation was because the graph was like this and this was like this no extrapolation was possible with the y-axis so you can't find find out the value at infinite dilution the lambda m or conductivity cannot be calculated now holras has given you a very interesting way how to find out hence it is called application how to find out the molar conductivity of wavelet so you are asked to find out the molar conductivity of acidic acid at infinite dilution so you are asked to find out this how will you find out it is not possible to find out by extrapolation you can find out this value now what can be done so you see minutely so we can write the uh, lambda not equal to this is ionic lambda smaller lambda is the ionic conductivity uh, uh, small lambda ch3 negative part and small lambda h positive ionic this is for ionic this is for molar am i right so very interesting fact this is the last part of my today's class you see how we will find uh, the molar conductivity of weak electrolyte at infinite dilution what Kholdas did is that so he has kept this thing as earlier we have shown from this one just he added a term uh, lambda small lambda ionic conductance ionic conductance na plus and ionic conductance cn minus negative he had just added these two terms am i right so as he has added these two terms he has subtracted the same two terms am i right na plus n lambda cl minus has added and the same way has been deducted so it is balanced now what's happened he has taken this and this by side by side so c is the c double negative lambda lambda not this positive here and h and cl side by side he has arranged these two and these two remain as it is from this he has taken these two one side he has taken these two one side and this is as it is now first interesting things appears here is that so lambda ionic conductance at infinity cstc double o and na plus these two ions give you the molar conductance of cstc double o na this is not ionic it is molar conductance and this HCl will give you the lambda ionic lambda ionic is the molar conductivity of HCl and this ion and ion molar conductivity of NaCl. Now you see it is strong electrolyte, it is strong electrolyte, it is strong electrolyte. Now this value of the strong electrolyte can be calculated from the graph by extrapolation and also HCl is the strong electrolyte can be calculated from the uh, extrapolation of strong electrolyte and this is again the strong electrolyte can be calculated from strong electrolyte so if you find out this this add up this two and subtract this value you will get the molar conductivity of weak electrolytes am i right so this is the application of Calder's law where the weak electrolytes conductivity at high um, at infant dilution cannot be calculated but he did it added some two terms and he subtracted and he rearranged in such a way he got all the terms strong electrolytes and strong electrolytes value can be calculated from the extrapolation so that finally we can find out the value of weak electrolyte from the solution hope this is the end of this today's class hope you have followed the class with utmost concentration please subscribe the class and in next topics i will come with the change of chemical change occurs due to the passage of current many means electrolysis or Faraday's law of electrolysis and different type of cell in one short in one class i will complete the next class thanks a lot for watching this class